Hi, I'm glad you stopped by. We're going to take a brief look at William Miller's rules for studying the Bible. This material is an exact copy as printed in the book. Therefore, typos are included. Spelling is from the 1841 era, and I hope you enjoy it. What is commonly known as the 41 Miller book actually has a real title. It is Views of the Prophecies and Prophetic Chronology Selected from Manuscripts of William Miller with a memoir, a <laughs> memoir of his life by Joshua B. Himes. The rules of interpretation found here are located in the book on pages 20 to 24. And in the future, uh, we do plan to be publishing this book for those who would like it. So, we are reading from the book itself. This is, there's a couple little other lines around it, but this is the main force of it. In studying the Bible, I have found the following rules to be of great service to myself and now give them to the public by special request. Every rule should be well studied in connection with the scripture references if the Bible student would be at all benefited by them. Every word must have its proper bearing on the subject presented in the Bible. That is number one, and that is an excellent rule. It's, uh, it's a shame that some people just pick out one little thing and they don't check it out. That's one reason we recommend eSword or other Bible search software that will search through the King James for you and find uh, all the common words for whatever your subject is. All right. Uh, number two, all scripture is necessary and may be understood by a diligent application and study. Notice that each one of these rules have references. This is all taken from the Bible, and it is just really very nice, very nice. Number three, nothing revealed in Scripture can or will be hid from those who ask in faith, not wavering. That's a really good point. Um, you have to remember, a lot of times, humans are very impatient when it comes to waiting on God. Um we got to get over being impatient. Number four, to understand doctrine, bring all the scriptures together on the subject you wish to know, and then let every word have its proper influence. And if you can form your theory without a contradiction, you cannot be in an error. I would caution you very much about thinking that you cannot be in an error. Um, we are very susceptible to Satan's devices, and he is constantly putting suggestions into our minds, and we have a duty to control our thoughts. But this is very important do not set yourself up for any kind of failure by thinking that you cannot be in an error. Uh, William Miller had more than one errors in some of his thoughts. He, one of the, in one place he was thinking that the 144,000 were all babies. And um, I haven't really studied out why it is that he thought that, but it is in print. Okay, 
Number five, scripture must be its own expositor since it is a rule of itself. You know, God has set up his word to teach people who are willing to be taught. Those who are too wise and too greatly educated to be led by some humble soul, and it is just uh, they have they have problems understanding things, and uh, a lot of the education that happens these days comes from the wrong side. Satan is uh, in control of the educational system by and large in uh, pretty much around the world. Okay, so scripture must be its own expositor since it is a rule of itself. If I depend on a teacher to expound it to me and he should guess at its meaning or desire to have it so on account of his sectarian creed or to be thought wise, then his guessing, desire, creed, or wisdom is my rule and not the Bible. I encourage you to look up all these texts. There may be certain texts that are misprints, so be aware of that. Um, and do follow his this rule. This is very important that you prove all things. Now, we're talking a great deal about the 144,000 because it is a very important subject, one that has been stolen from you by ignoring it largely, but it's important to study it, and it's important to know these some of these things. So, prove what I am telling you. Check it out. I try my best to give references for everything I say. Prove it. Prove all things. Okay, number six. God has revealed things to come by visions, in figures and parables, and in this way, the same things are oftentimes revealed again and again by different visions or in different figures and parables. Remember, we just had the video about parables and how important that is, and that is one way that God hides the truth in plain sight because people that are too smarty pants, they can't make it out, and it irritates them, and they so they go for an, another uh, translation that will sound better to them and, and read more comfortable to them. Uh, that's because they're not willing to be led by God by and large. Um, then it says here, continuing, if you wish to understand them, you must combine them all in one. And that's very, very good. All right, visions are always mentioned as such. Number eight, figures always have a figurative meaning and are used much in prophecy to represent future things, times, and events, such as mountains, meaning governments, beasts, meaning kingdoms, waters, meaning people, lamp, meaning word of God. Right? Psalms 119, 105, right there. We covered that early, early on in this series here in this playlist of videos. Number nine, parables are used as comparisons to illustrate subjects and must be explained in the same way as figures by the subject and Bible. 
And it says here, see explanation of the ten virgins in Miller's lectures. Okay, number ten, figures sometimes have two or more different significations as day is used in a figurative sense to represent three different periods of time. One, indefinite. Two, definite. A day for a year. Three, day for a thousand years. If you put on the right construction, it will harmonize with the Bible and make good sense. Otherwise, it will not. Now, I'll give you a, a really good example, a day for a thousand years. Uh, Adam and Eve were told that they were, that if they ate of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, that they were going to die. Well, guess what? They did die in one day. Not one person on earth has ever lived for more than one day in God's eyes, right? You have to go to Second Peter 3, verse 8, a day for a thousand years. So, very interesting little point there. Number 11, how to know when a word is used figuratively. If it makes good sense as it stands and does no violence to the simple laws of nature, then it must be understood literally, if not figuratively. Okay, number 12. To learn the true meaning of figures, trace your figurative word through your Bible and where you find it explained, put it on your figure, and if it makes good sense, you need look no further. If not, look again. 13. To know whether we have the true historical event for the fulfillment of a prophecy, if you find every word of the prophecy after the figures are understood is literally fulfilled, then you may know that your history is the true event. But if one word lacks a fulfillment, then you must look for another event or wait its future development. For God takes care that history and prophecy doth agree so that the true believing children of God may never be ashamed. And then we come to the most important rule of all. That is, that you must have faith. It must be a faith that requires a sacrifice. And, if tried, would give up the dearest object on earth, the world and all its desires, character, living, occupation, friends, home, comforts, and worldly honors. If any of these should hinder our believing any part of God's word, it would show our faith to be vain. Nor can we ever believe so long as one of these motives lies lurking in our hearts. We must believe that God will never forfeit his word, and we can have confidence that he takes notice of the sparrow and numbers the hairs of our head, will guard the translation of his own word and throw a barrier around it and prevent those who sincerely trust in God and put implicit confidence in his word from erring far from the truth, <clears throat> though they may not understand Hebrew or Greek. They have long sentences in those days, and this material is very, very good. If you would like a PDF of this, instead of just in the video, I'll be happy to email that to you. Just send in your request, email me, and the email address is on the About page of the channel. And 
you can enjoy hard copy. A lot of people like that. I do. God bless your study.